Hey folks, so this is a, a video kind of follow up to a video I've just shot talking about cold steel swords and what I see as the main problem with the ones that I have tried, tested, handled myself. And it's about weight distribution. But actually, um, what this is about is weight of swords. So for many, many years and to this current day, uh, people talk about the weight of swords and when they're talking about different replicas and manufacturers, they often point out that something is overweight. Now that is a completely valid point. That is not wrong. Okay, so that's not what I'm saying in this video. Um, but uh, what I want to point out is that oftentimes people talk purely about the weight of a replica sword and they don't talk about its weight distribution. And unfortunately, one of the reasons for that is you can talk about a weight as a pure number, okay? It's a simple piece of language. I can say that a sword weighs 900 grams or 1,000 grams or 1,050 grams or 1,300 grams, and that gives you instantly a piece of information, a data point about that sword. And if I say, you know, let's say, for example, the cold steel Polish saber, which some people have been talking about recently, if, um, if someone says to me, you know, how is that replica? And someone uh, says, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit overweight. It should maybe weigh um, a thousand grams, and it actually weighs, let's say, thirteen hundred grams. I don't know that these numbers are correct. Incidentally, I'm just making up the numbers. And they say, you know, oh, thirteen hundred grams. Really, you'd expect it for that type of saber to be more like a thousand grams. Well, putting aside the fact that there's a lot of variation in original swords, so saying something's right or wrong. You can't, if we look at medieval arming swords, there's a huge weight range. There's an example in the Wallace collection which weighs three and a half pounds, and that's just an ar a fairly small arming sword, and some of them only weigh down to, yes, I know I'm mi mixing imperial and metric, uh, some of them weigh only like one and a half pounds. So there's a huge weight range in medieval arming swords. So if someone says, how much does a medieval arming sword weigh? It's a kind of impossible, well, you say a range, basically. You say one and a half pounds to three and a half pounds. That's a pretty big range, but there we go. That's historical. Um, but if, for example, they say, oh, this Polish saber uh, weighs 1,300 grams and really it would be better if it weighed 1,000 grams, yes, that's not wrong. That's kind of true. But I want to point out that you can have a, let's say, 1,000 gram Polish saber with awful weight distribution and just with everything in the wrong place. And you can have a 1,300 gram Polish saber with great weight, weight distribution and everything moving just right. And this is connected to point of balance. A lot of people talk about what's its weight, what's its point of balance. Now again, knowing something's point of balance does give you some information and it's easy. It's easy information to confer, but it doesn't tell you about the weight distribution. As a simple uh, point, we could have something which is a very light stick with two masses at each end. And the point of balance would be exactly the same as if we had a light stick with all the mass, all the remaining mass in the middle. It would have the same point of balance and it would have the same mass, but the, uh, the inertia, the, how it feels in the hand, the weight distribution would be entirely different. And this is incredibly complex with swords. Now, in fact, if we go back many years, um, Mike Lodes, who uh, many of you will know from TV, things like Time Commanders and various um, documentaries, reconstructing chariots and all of that kind of stuff, and his work with um, Woots or Damascus Steel. Um, and Mike Lodes, who I, who I do know um, to some degree, and in fact, I'll be reviewing one of his books, uh, upcoming books, uh, very soon on this channel, um, he used to use the word, if I remember correctly, he used to use the word heft. Now heft isn't something we can quantify in a number, unfortunately, so it doesn't really get used, but actually describing something's heft is actually quite a useful thing. So if, for example, you say, oh, well, you know, that, um, that long sword, it weighs uh, 1,500 grams, but, uh, but it's, it's quite nimble in the tip. That actually tells me quite a lot about the sword to a degree, but that can just be a function of point of balance. And that's another problem, is that sometimes people feel a point of balance towards the hand being, like they describe something being well balanced as that being good. Well, as I've mentioned many times on this channel, sometimes a point of balance further up the blade on something like a 1796, like Cavalry Sabre or um, certain types of other cut-centric swords, is actually a big advantage. Um, and the general rule being, of course, that a weapon can be lighter 
with a point of balance further up the blade. In other words, the weight distribution is further up the blade, but the total weight is still low. And what you end up with is a relatively fast and relatively powerful sword. And it's something that Colonel Mary Mong talks about in his um, treatise called A Memoir on Swords, um, uh, which was originally in French and was translated into English by a, a British officer in about 1860, if I remember correctly. Um, and um, yeah, so weight distribution is very, very important. So without banging on for too long, because I have sort of talked about, I've talked more specifically about point of balance in the past, but weight, when we talk about or mass, uh, I know the physicists out there will correct me, when we talk about the mass of a sword, um, it only tells us a certain amount, and I really want to impress upon you that that's important. So whilst I might say that Cold Steel's replica of the Polish sabre or Shabla is too heavy, which isn't a correct statement, incidentally. Firstly, I, I haven't handled it. I've never seen it, in fact, in, in the flesh. Um, and it's not technically too heavy because there are heavy examples. But let's just say that it has too much mass, theoretically. Um, that doesn't actually tell you an awful lot about the sword because it, it might be that its um, weight distribution is such a way that that is correct for that sword. And you know, one of the common things, if I just grab a completely different kind of sword for a second, if we just quickly take the rapier, you know, this, my rapier is 1300 grams and it's a, it's a prime example of this point and I've mentioned it many times on my channel. Um, but whilst that's 1300 grams, that weighs the same as uh, one of my, uh, for example, my falchion, okay, my large Conyers falchion, but they are utterly different swords because the weight distribution of a rapier is all back here. So that the tip is incredibly n nimble and quick to move around, but the total weight of the object, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's 1300 grams. Your, your shoulder gets tired. It's, it's actually a relatively heavy weapon for a one-handed sword. And it is historical and it is based on an example in the Wallace collection. So, to sum up, weight distribution, and I know I've said this before on the channel, but it's really, really important point, okay? When we're talking about replica or original swords, just stating the mass without anything else doesn't tell us anything really useful. Um, tells us a little bit, but not, not, not very much, not as much as you might initially think. You've got to know the mass, Maybe knowing the point of balance is useful because it's indicative of certain things, although it doesn't necessarily tell you everything for the reason I've stated, because you can have the same point of balance with very different weight distributions. So you really need to know almost verbally, almost descriptively and subjectively as well, it has to be said, how does a sword feel? Because a sword can have the same mass and the same point of balance and feel completely different in the hand, uh, depending on how the weight is distributed in that sword. Anyway, thanks for watching folks, and um, I'll see you really soon for another sword or weapon related video. Cheers. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.